Hey folks, this is Ben Yussel. Um I'm making a video, this video about Russia. I don't think I covered Russia and when I was talking about thoughts about Europe and Europeans. So um, so we're getting to Russia um, because it's a very big country and all the way over from Europe, all the way to the Pacific. Uh, so anyway, apologize. apologies to all Russians out there. It might touch on other countries surrounding Russia a little bit uh, as, it, as it influences my thoughts about Russia, but here we go. So, um, just, just right off the bat, um, it goes without saying that meant like many Americans, I was very influenced by, um, the Reagan era and, uh, previous eras regarding the Cold War. And, um, I never actually consciously thought to myself, I hate Russians. I never actually had that, 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 um, train of thought. I never, I never put too, too much stock in that. It was always more of a kind of a, hmm, these guys are kind of our rivals, I guess you could say. They're kind of the ones that, um, are, um, Um, the ones that that we you know wanted that we talk we hear about the most in the news are the ones that uh, we're like more likely to start a war with. I guess, I guess they're the they're the, they're the guys with all the the nuclear you know missiles, nuclear with vessels. I, okay. Yeah, so so it was that was when I was younger, and I, I heard all I got kind of absorbed all that stuff, but I never actually said to myself, I hate Russians. It wasn't like every single Russian was a bully or every single Russian was mean or whatever. It wasn't like that at all. I, I just, I didn't really think about it really too much. I didn't really, you know, I just, I just heard stuff from the news and, and the news made it sound like Russia was a bad place and, you know, scary and, you know, and you see all, you saw all the Russian propaganda videos and all the military stuff and you're like hmm and you had a certain feeling about russia but it wasn't russians it was moscow it was it was the soviet government it was the you know red square it was communism and it was shows of power and stuff and and that was you know so and it wasn't you know, and that's what the Russians do well. That's what they did well. They 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 put on you know this really tough. You know, we're gonna get we're gonna be tough with you guys, and they they're still kind of doing that kind of, but it's not quite as obvious. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's like every single government of any powerful nation in the world is doing that. They're, they're kind of like. Government leaders are are weird. They're different. They're different than the people. People are always much better, uh, uh, just across the board. Just across the board. I think. And by the way, this is one of the the big things that everybody does in line is they lump their government in with their people. I know that's the people are always better. They're always better because people in government are corrupted by power, and so uh, most of the time, so they're going to be corrupt. And people are not corrupt. Anyway. So people should be in charge. It's one of the reasons why democracy... Probably one of the bigger, biggest reasons why democracy is a better... A better, but not necessarily the best form of government, in my opinion. But it is better. It's close to the best. If It's just a question of... Yeah. Anyway. So. Russia. Um, well, you know. It's easy, you know. So, yes, it's true that communism fell and Moscow is whatever. I, I, I just, I love Russian music. I love Russian culture. Um, I don't see that antagonistic, militaristic thing um, as being the same thing as Russian culture. Um, if you see a bunch of guys dancing, like Cossack dances or whatever, Trepak dance or whatever, that's that might seem militaristic and 
holy, 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 look how athletic we are. And, you know, if you're not careful, we're going to kick you. There's kind of, <laughs> there's kind of that, that feeling a little bit you get if you see like a funny movie like if um, the man who too the man who knew too uh, little or something like that it was with Bill Murray and he goes over to Russia and it's a really fun movie but you know you get that impression when you're seeing these performers that uh, you know they're they're performing like entertainment right but it's kind of it's always that thing about Russia where you're wondering are they gonna pull a crazy Ivan on me and they're gonna start you know kicking my face. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, but, you know, it's it's funny. I think you know, there's there's a humor to it. Um, I think Russians do like to. How can I put this? Russia. If there's anything about the culture I'm talking about, little bit, is I'm learning more and more. Of all peoples in the world, Russians really do like to to. Um, they, they just like kind of like China. They they, they don't they don't want to be number two, but also um, it's more like they like to have you guessing all the time regarding what their government's going to do or what you know. In a way, in a way, it's I wouldn't say they liked it, but they the main thing they don't like is to be vulnerable. They don't they don't like to be subservient to some other power. They can't stand that. Um, they have to be um, not um, not dominated by some other country. So, and of course, it's interesting when you think about how they feel about communism. If anything, it's imagine it's fairly pro Putin. I mean, I, I can I totally make sense. Putin is a strong leader, and life is good in Russia. And so, I think people are Russians are pretty pro Russia. But at the same time, I think that Russians aren't quite as, um, I don't know. I hate to say they were ever brainwashed about the West, but a lot of people are brainwashed about the West anyway. There's some truth always in what the governments are saying that's anti-American because there's, there's certain things about America that really do stink, and I hate it. You know, but, um, but Russians are seeing things more clearly now, I think, about what Americans really, really like, and we, we love Russians. We do. We love them, and most of us. Those those of us who are not brainwashed too much by Cold War Cold War era stuff, and concurrently, I think Russians love Americans, and you know it's a it's great. I want to keep that happy feeling going, man. It's and Russians love Europeans, and Europeans love Russians, and and so, and I think Russians do feel a connection with other Europeans, of course. Um, and you can also talk about things like the Orthodox Church and. And uh, other things, like cultural things. Again, I mentioned I love Russian music, of course. It goes without saying, Rachmaninoff, Tchaikovsky. Absolutely, yes. Uh, Rimsky, Korsakov, Sorksky, um, Prokofiev. So, um, uh, yeah, Stravinsky, Shostakovich, and stuff. Um, you know, but I, but anyway. So, of course, there's a lot of other artsy things I think are great about. Russia and um, Russian food, even though it's not considered quite as amazing as French food and stuff, it still has a place in my psyche. I love I love borscht. I love pickled fo- pickled foods, and I love pierogies and um, pierogies, whatever, um, and babushka dolls, and a lot of the art. I've seen a lot of arts type stuff from Russia. I, there's a Russian museum I remember going to with my visit with my family. We were close to like the Washington DC area. And I remember um, how many turquoise colored um, gems and jewelry they had there artwork from pre a lot, a lot of pre communist era days. So this is like the era of the SARS and czars, um, just beautiful stuff. And um, very uh, again, a lot of turquoises and aquamarines, um, but reds and yellow oranges, very vivid colors. I love how color, just colorful everything was as far as the paintings and everything. And the vases and just, it, but then you, you get a feeling of, um, yeah, it's like it very much is. It was a feeling of Europe meeting Asia a little bit. The steeps of Russia, steps of Russia. Um, yeah, and I mean, it was, the feeling was so overwhelming that. 
you know, it was almost one of those things where I, I vowed never to have any seriously bad feelings about Russia ever again. I, I mean, I remember being so overcome with emotion and fondness for Russia that, yeah, like I said, I told myself I wasn't going to ever, I was never going to hate Russia even remotely ever again after having that experience. I remember just thinking about that museum, how strong that feeling was. And I remember also feeling, again, the impressions of the Russian people not, again, really not liking to be dominated by any other power. And I remember kind of understanding a little bit more why they felt that way, even though I, it only went so far, but um, I could understand, again, it's not that nobody, nobody likes people guessing about things, but I, I could understand why they would um, kind of put on a brave face or a, I should say poker face, you know, why even, well, anyway. So many things were a little bit more um, clear to me about Russian culture and about um, in general. And, and just being tough and being um, brave and and um, kind of just putting up with stuff. Um, a lot of what I saw with paintings were kind of, again, farmer-oriented. And I got to tell you, when it comes to Russia, um, there are some strong similarities with tons of nations, not just Europe and Eurasia. But if you're going from, like, Germany to Poland to Belarus to Russia and then on over to you know other nations in Asia you really do feel um, it's hard to overlook all the farmers the folks that are in the fields men and women with sickles and they're harvesting wheat and they're on the farms and you know it's eh, you can look at kind of Europe versus Asia that way or other places like Africa so they're just farm, farming is a little different. What they're eating is different, all that stuff. But um, this is one of the things that I feel will help um, bring Western Europe and Eastern Europe closer together, which I want very much, uh, very much. And um, you know, it's I don't I, I, I when I ever mentioned these things about different countries, ultimately I want countries to have fonder feelings toward each other and, and, and you know, um, emphasize the similarities while having the differences be something fun to make everybody unique, kind of like people, you know, but anyway, to be honest, you know, I won't say who, but people in my close immediate social circle slash family, there's, there's still sentiments of fear uh, traveling to Russia, of course. Um, a lot of Russians are still not happy with Americans or some, it's a question of where I guess you're talking about, but not only, it's not necessarily just anti-American stuff or anti, and, and, you know, that kind of, you guys think you're the best and everything. It's not just that in Russia though, I, I do believe that, um, kind of this is Europe, but more in the past, but in some areas of Europe, yes, this is still kind of the case. I imagine it gets as you get as you go farther east in Europe, not just starting in Germany, but not necessarily just Germany, it could be other areas in Western Europe, but if you go from Germany eastward and also a little bit there's kind of a similar vibe, at least in Finland in the Baltic states, but it's generally eastward uh, and then it gets really strong in Russia. You know what I'm talking about it's it has to do with uh, neo nazism and uh, it used to be of course Germany was. You know, World War Two. I goes without saying it was uh, Nazi Germany, um, but then after World War Two, um, when you know we know a lot of folks that were Nazi official, you know, officers and things. A lot of folks went to Argentina, but um, in Europe was kind of after a while, you know, looking at what you know all this stuff that happened, and guess who started to really going again on similar trains of thought and with organizations. There's organizations, there's always been the KKK in the United States and the Aryan nations and stuff, but yeah, I mean, like you started having neo-Nazi groups forming. Um, oh, 
it, they were in small numbers, imagine, in the 70s and 80s, but very small numbers. But yeah, they got, they got bigger and bigger, and the immigrant issue is really driving those numbers up farther and farther. Essentially, if I wasn't white, I would I wouldn't go to Russia probably ever, or I'd be very nervous about it. Or, you know, and as you know, the vast majority of people that go to Europe that aren't white are just looking; they're not looking to make trouble. They're not, you know. But uh, your Russians are not having it, um, and I understand perfectly why. In general, the anti-immigration thing it should be it should be noted that it's. It should be different than Nazism, but because it com- often comes down to what you look like, uh, in addition to what you believe, it, you know, I just, you know, I just know that um, there's going to be some big, big things going on there, and and uh, of all, beyond to every other nation in Europe, Russia, the Russians really do have a um, most Russians. I say, well, I know my boss. A lot of Russians have issues with folks that are not only not white, to some degree or another, but um, not orthodox or just not Russian culturally and all this other stuff, you know. And so, it, again, it makes sense to me. I don't want people to, you know, it's easy to say, oh, Russians are racist. That's what, no, just, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a complicated thing or it's, it's a multifaceted thing. Mm, but you know, Western Europe kind of has learned a lot of things. I'll put it that way. Maybe they went a little too far in some respects. But Western Europe went out through all of this stuff, and they've gone through it all, a lot of it with their thoughts about people are not white. Russians kind of haven't really had those experiences as a, as a nation, so they might have to go through a lot of what Western Europe did in order to not. In order to treat people that are not white better, but there's also the question of, you know, is are, are, is Europe just going to be for Europeans or primarily for Europeans, or how many other people that are not European are going to be in Europe? These are all things that Russians have to answer for themselves, and you know, it's not a simple issue. Um, it is simple to say you should be Christ-like and be kind to everybody, but it's also a question of. Um, so if Europe is going to be for everybody, you know, um, what about Asia and, uh, Africa and China and Japan and Korea? They don't want, you know, the nations becoming just everybody's mixed. So why can't Europe be the same way? And so, you know, all these trades of thought make a lot of sense to me. And I'm not really going to talk too much about this subject, but just understand that this is, this is a real deal for Russians. They have to, they have to answer these questions. In, in Western Europe, but especially United States, we're, we're very mixed. A lot of people like these areas because they're very affluent. Um, we've always thought that Europe still, I think most, most people would agree, um, Europe should still be pretty much European. Right? Um, I don't think we wanted to see it become not European. That was my, it's my hunch. But it's just a controversial thing still. People have different thoughts about this. But um, yeah. Um, because it's not just a question of being racist or, racist or not, or being tolerant of other races or not. It's a question of the actual character of a nation, what it's becoming. So, yeah. Um, so, but getting back to Russia and what I think of Russians, again, just more on that subject. Um, yeah, it's increasingly positive. It's it's gone from neutrally, or actually, kind of in the positive neutral ballpark. I was uneasy about the government, but I was I was loving loving people too. Yeah, I'm quite fond of Russia. I just know that um, of how nations go, and you can now you know a little bit more why. Russians are not necessarily the friendliest of people, but yeah, they can be very friendly. Um, it's just that there's a lot of reasons why they might not be so super friendly. <laughs> Um, depending, and they, there's some, there's some, some deep held grudges, and it's not just, it's not just if you're not white. It's again, I'm getting back to the United States and Western Europe. Russia has probably always been a little bit uneasy with. Um, I think Germany is probably okay now. I think Russians have forgiven Germans. I think relations are pretty positive between Germany and Russia. Um, similar thing with Poland, kind of. Uh, France, that's another thing. Uh, I don't think it's even personal, but 
there is a subject that is driving a lot of why Russia Russians don't want to feel dominated by another country. And but I won't get to talk about that too much. It might be a little sensitive, kind of. Really, no, it's more Britain and America. Because um, as far as leadership in the world, in the really powerful countries in the world, United States in particular, but also Britain, because United States and England have, or Britain have a kind of a special relationship that way. Russia, I know Russia see, sees this, sees a special relationship, and, and um, they're like, hmm, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, hmm, okay. What do we think of you guys? But, you know, it's, you know, and some people, Russians, I've heard Russians say they hate Anglo-Saxons. That being, I don't think they're referring necessarily to Germans so much. Maybe some of them actually are are actually referring to at least Northern Germans or Germans. But it's really more English and Americans. And it's more the, the, the kind of the, we're the best, you know, the, the, the feeling I get from Russians at times and this is probably more the case inside of Russia, not not Russians so much that have come to America, the United States, whatever. But there is kind of the Russians do pick up on the, you guys think you're so amazing, you guys think you're hot stuff, you know, with all your you know, democracy and you know, where America's number one and you know, sports stuff and you know, yeah, they I know they pick up on this stuff and. You gotta give it to the Russians. It makes a lot of sense to me now. With you have British hooligans and soccer and stuff, they go over and they mess with these other people. It got on their skin, and so the Russians, what they do, they get their some of the really big boys, um, and they go beat these guys up, and then it causes a big uproar, where the British were just kind of being punks originally. They weren't. They were. They were kind of doing something where they knew it was something that was gonna make people upset. And Europe just kind of deals with that, and they have everybody has their little soccer gangs, you know, these big soccer games and stuff. And for the most part, it's a bunch of drunk guys that you know, whatever. But the Russians were have they, they had enough of it. They were like, oh, we can't stand these guys anymore. So yeah, that happened. And then everyone thinks that Russians are like, you know, these big, huge bad guys that come around and beat everybody up. And all it was again was no, they just said the British were being punks. They were being they were they they were they were just being insufferable. And the British can be insufferable. They can tease very well. They know how to tease very well. Yes, they do. <laughs> um as much as I love England, it also has a dark side to it. Uh yeah. And so I'm not saying the Russians did the right thing, I'm just saying it makes sense to me, right? It makes sense. But no, I it should have not been. When Putin says stuff like, yeah, they're doing a good thing. Like, okay. I'm I'm still of a divided opinion. I, as much as my heart is allied with Britain in so many, so many respects, ancestrally and everything, I have to say, again say, these British hooligans, maybe they're going too far. They should be more respectful. Or, you know, some nations, I can see them not even allowing things to happen anymore or uh, just, just beefing up police or just i don't know um might be one of the again one many things leading to a world war i don't know i doubt that would be the case i think that would be more again a well i don't know armageddon thing with israel and arab nations plus russia plus china and i i can't see hand going differently but goading and teasing can certainly um get really nasty really quick Anyway, um, and so I'm going into a little bit of introduction here. I've known a fair number of Russians now teaching music lessons. And I actually, no joke, it, it literally feels like, I'm, I mean, um, you have to understand, I just, I've only known a handful of Russians before when I was younger. I didn't really know too many. And they're always really nice folks and they're really smart and stuff and everything and did well in school, very, very well in school. At least the ones I know. I know there's some lazier guys. <laughs> I know, I know. There's a segment so in Everett, near where I live. A lot of folks who work for Boeing have. There's a lot of Russians in Snohomish County, and some are really hardworking. Others, yeah, <laughs> anyway, oh whatever. But but the thing is, is I the feeling I had was it was very similar. Same thing with Poland, but I was like I kept seeing, you know, the similarities, the similarities between Russians and Germans. 
and Russians and Swedes and and Russians and other Europeans and even Russians and other folks in Asia. Um, I had I mentioned I I don't haven't met Lima met I've only met one person from Mongolia, not too many people from the stands, and of course there's China and Korea and um, the feeling I always had was, although the the parents could be tough on their kids, um, I I knew kind of. I just kind of knew, I had a feeling, a growing feeling of what uh, what was expected of me as a music teacher and, you know, what, just, just all the un- unspoken stuff. It was, it was, it was a, a learning experience for me. Um, and it's the case with everybody, all the other folks you meet from Russia. So again, if, if I ever meet someone from Russia and, and they have, some not so nice things to say about the United States or they're just upset about something or whatever, whatever it is, I'll hear him out. I've learned um, I'll hear him out and, and it should be a friendlier thing. But um, anyway, so again, I much love toward Russia. I love Russia. Um, and I definitely leave your thoughts and comments below. I'm glad the cold war is, kind of done not really <laughs> we'll see <laughs> i know everybody's looking at china now and everybody's still wondering if putin's gonna whatever want a little bit more a little more a little more of the crane but it's really just you know it's not something that occupies my thoughts very much um i think putin is mainly interested in having russia be stronger um economically and um yeah I want to. I want to believe the best, at least, about Putin. A lot of people say in the United States like Putin even more than Trump. I, I. That's a very common thing. It's not necessarily a white supremacist thing, although I, I get that sometimes. The whole Trump Putin thing, but, um, but to me, it, it it's one of those things that can help people just be like, you know, we're not all that different, you know. And I simply go at some point. I want Afro Americans and everybody else to feel more welcome in the presence of Russians and stuff. It's not, again, I don't think it's that, it's more especially Russians over the United States. I don't think that, I don't know. I just know that you want to have everybody be more comfortable in everybody else's presence, ultimately. Anyway, um, I'm going to head out here. Um, Leave leave a touch of comments comments below. And again, I love Russia. Um, Talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye.